Oh, no, man. You talk about disrespect punching right here. I'm, I'm Yeenie. Get my underwear. We have I'm Yeenie gay. right now. We gave our own definition to MFT. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to Downtime in the Ring. This is a special episode, special just random episode that we decided to throw together because we were all going to have an interview. Unfortunately, we have to reschedule. So instead, why don't you get all of our dumb ideas about the WWE Draft 2024 Night One reactions? This is right after the show. We have been giving commentary the entire time. We should have recorded it, but we were waiting for uh, a different project that didn't come of it. So you just get to hear all of it again right now. I'm joined by my co host, Chris. I'm joined by my co host, Unk. And we are here to have a good time. I told you to press the red button earlier <laughs> i told you far earlier just turn it on it's such good shit going on I but we know. here now man we here now what's up but the draft is done yes and we got some picks to discuss yes so not too crazy not too insane not too in intense uh some pretty interesting call-ups some that we shouldn't have even had at all it was over overall it was a pretty good night um i like this year's draft they made it actually a draft instead of just being like employee blah 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 is going to blah 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 department it made it feel real it made it feel exciting it made it feel wonderful so overall i liked it i liked it tonight plus i got to see tiffany stratton do the prettiest moonsault ever onto Bailey and Naomi. It was a pretty okay. decent draft. I, I enjoyed it. Um, different style presentation, matching that of the NFL draft. So it works. It works for me better than the one time they did the like, uh, the one I always kind of go back to is the one with the, I think it's with Paul Heyman and Eric Bischoff. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. With the tumble. Yeah. Yeah, with the tumblers and stuff. So I was like, ah, how are they going to try and make this better this time around? So it, it was it was really good. I liked it. Listen, call me a uh, a fool for the old times. But all we got to do is go back to when the draft had the light up board and it just flashed over everybody's picture. And then it's just ticka 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 wow, draft pick. Like for me, I feel like that was... That that was it, as far as the draft mm. go. But as far as tonight's draft is concerned, it didn't hurt nobody. It put some it put some pieces in place and it moved some things around. I'm not completely upset with it. It depends on what happens on Monday for me to then develop a full opinion on everything. But it looked good. So let's begin with our round one breakdown as we go into this first round of the wwe draft as i have up on my tv right here we have the number one overall pick in this year's draft not be roman it couldn't have Bro been cody because he's a protected champion so who was it then miss est of the wwe i'm telling you right now a championship is in her future like i've been pushing bianca Belair Indeed. is our number one overall. And I think we were talking about it. I believe that this is the first woman to be number one overall 
in like a decade of the draft's conception. Yes, so history. Because I don't believe Charlotte's ever been a number one. I don't believe Becky's ever been a number one. And unfortunately, we know damn for sure that Bailey and Sasha were not number ones. So no. none of the four horse women have ever been a number one. But Miss Bianca Belair is number one across the board. Well deserved, well earned. I mean, listen, she ain't got no, she doesn't have a belt, so we give her something. Normally, she always has a championship, so we'll give her overall first round draft pick. That's hard. What about I like, you? I like how I like what, how where it stands. Um, considering everything that's been going on with Rhea down, uh. I was kind of thinking Liv would have been maybe number one. So I, I feel like they were kind of leaning towards that a little bit more, maybe. But I ain't, I'm not too mad about Jay being number one. Jay, or Jay, Bianca Belair being number one. <laughs> Somewhere Nikki's smiling right now because you said Liv at number one. So <laughs> Yeah. It, 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 eh, eh. Eh. So we have our first SmackDown pick, but then we go over to raw and we get the man that makes me yeet myself every single night and every single morning. I'm yeeting all the time. I'm yeeting in my underwear. We have I'm yeeting Jay. right now. Yeets. <laughs> we have main event. Jay Uso on the board for raw. How are we Surpri feeling? Surprising first pick surprising pick for a first round uh, uh draft pick for raw because just because i mean it's the first round it's first pick and that says to me that hey we're putting a lot of stock in main event jay uso to draft him first because again that roster on raw is bloated it's a lot of people and half the people that's on that roster that's good ain't even on tv all right, so for me, surprise, surprise, but I understand because, again, he's in that main event cooking every single week, having good matches, so I'm not mad at it. I see where Ugg's coming from. Uh, they've been trying to push, and he's – that they're, they're trying to rebuild after that iffy mania match between him, and it's not all it's their, their fault because – it... It's completely their fault. Whoever went over on time shouldn't have went over on time. Well, yeah, yeah. Was it the? It was the ladder match that was before them, right? If I'm I not think mistaken. so. Yeah, yeah. But I was honestly thinking Gunther was going to be number one, um, considering how dominant the Intercontinental Reign is. Uh, him losing the title was was. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I'm still processing that. <laughs> um, but I just felt like he had so much more like value to add. Like they've put so much more value into it, into him as as a performer. So I was just like, oh well, Gunther going either way, especially with um Kaiser kind of disbanding Imperium. Yeah. Like I thought, oh, like it was gonna be him and Kaiser back on SmackDown, you know. But but I, I it, it wasn't bad. Then we have, you know what? I can't, I can't do it. I gotta, I gotta grab something before I do this amazing introduction. Okay. Yes. The, uh, while, while he goes grab his thing, the first ever, uh, NXT draft pick going over to the main roster. He, him is him. Oh, exactly. <laughs> We got Him. Carmelo Hayes as the second, yes, my new favorite toy, the second pick in the first round for SmackDown. They are cooking on SmackDown yes. at this point in the draft. We have Carmelo Hayes. I love it. I love it. it this, was doesn't, this doesn't prove I'm a fan. I don't know. I love it. Uh, I mean, he was already here. It's okay, though. He's officially here. Yes. We was already here though, but that's good. Yeah, that's cool too. That's cool. Testing the waters with him on SmackDown already. It kind of it was it was a nice kind of transition in. Now that he's kind of fully fledged onto it, 
it was kind of a long time coming with him. Um, I figured maybe a little they would have pulled the trigger earlier than this to do that, considering he's already been having those matches on SmackDown. Um, but he's he's the guy who graduated from NXT. He's been clearly that guy. It was him and Braun. So uh, it's not a surprise to me, really. Uh, not like the other one that got called up, but we'll get to that one later. Yes, we will. Indeed. So to finish off round one, to round it out, Raw getting their second pick of the night have chosen Seth freaking Rollins, basically the workhorse in the world championship scene for the past like nine months. And unfortunately, he's going to be out for about nine months. But we appreciate everything that Seth has done. This is an interesting pick, and I was saying that while we were watching this, because he's injured, why would you have him on the draft board? You have to secure him, because if you don't, if he's on SmackDown, eyeballs are moving, because people love to sing his song. Mm -hmm. Me included. So, if I'm, if, if I'm a, a raw exec, you're right. We need Seth on Monday, so that's what we did. Because apparently we taking Jay over Seth, but both are here. The uh, Monday Jay. Night Messiah, Monday Night Rollins. It's in the. It's it's in it. It's got to be him to Raw. I just fully. I I agree with this pick. Um, to secure him, I understand where you're coming from. Where it's where he's injured. Of course, and that's kind of like why would you get the injured guy? Yeah, he, he's probably singing his theme song in bed after his surgery. <laughs> after like after the, all that, the injured guy can have a match of the year with a torn fucking pet. What was what, what? What was ripped? MCL, what, MCL, a torn meniscus. MC, a torn meniscus going out there two nights of WrestleMania. Yeah, putting over all the young talent. Exactly. You're not wrong there. You definitely aren't wrong there, and we will move on to round two, which will feature these four right here. Oh, yeah. Starting off will be the second or the third pick for SmackDown, first pick in round two, which they are keeping Randy Orton, which... Is a it, it? I guess this one's my given pick that the, he should stay there because he, it looks like he's having a lot more fun right now in this run. So why not just keep him on SmackDown Plus? Fox, you, you're still trying to renew the Fox deal, so you need some names on SmackDown. Indeed. Oh, yeah, absolutely right, Donovan. That is all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Rand Randy's got that aura with him. He's one of those legends that, yeah, uh, it's a negotiable tactic for SmackDown to keep that Fox deal. Uh, he is having a hell of a time with KO at the moment. So, um, considering that the tag titles are are locked into SmackDown over there, the WWE tag titles, mm -hmm. it's just going to be a nice feud leading into it. I'm just thinking in terms of long term. I can see them going. This pay per view, maybe, maybe a little bit halfway through, and then start something between him and KO. So it, it won't be long until Randy turns heel again, <laughs> which is all good. We know it's coming. Yeah. Then we have the third pick for Monday Night Raw being the man that basically killed Cedric Alexander, Braun Breaker. This one was a I what did I say it was a steal. This a one was considered steal. A steal. That one was a steal. 100%. This one's going to be interesting. He's going to have fun, especially because they're going to head over to Netflix soon, so he's guaranteed at least a few weeks on Netflix to even a few months depending on when we do the the draft if we have it after May next year because they want to have Mania in May. So, he's going to have some fun on Netflix. This is going to be cool. I'm excited. Hell yeah. I will say the lead up, you know how they were kind of pushing Braun to be on SmackDown, kind of, 
yeah. with the leagues leading up. There, I sympathize with that kind of thing because it is kind of like a swerve. But I mean, Ron Breaker to me fits that Randy Orton mold on top of that powerhouse mold. So he could be a, a nasty heel on top of just going 35 miles an hour, killing people in the ring. <laughs> so uh, it's 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 solid pick again, Steel. I just feel for one Nick Aldis because I'm sure did we not see Brian Breaker sign that SmackDown contract? <laughs> did we see that on te- We went to the extremes to sign this man on television just to move him over a couple months later. I mean, listen, <laughs> it's the draft. Anything can happen. And honestly, I'm here for the matchups. I cannot wait to see Ricochet get split in half by a Braun Breaker spear oh. on everything. We even said poor Sammy. Poor, poor Sammy. Sammy. <laughs> poor Sammy. Oh, my ribs hurt for all of them already. He's going to have a fun match with Gable. I'm already trying to think of every match that I could think of that this is going to be fun. Now, it's gonna work. we head over to two picks that are very questionable and could be super argumentative, except for one, because we know a gentleman will comment later. We have SmackDown with Nia Jax, which... Chris put up a, a valid point about her nuclear heat lately, so I understand why she went so early. I just personally wish that she hadn't gone at all and they could have filled this spot with somebody else. No, like who? Who would you put it? Who would you put Tiffany put Stratton spot right here? Tiffany Stratton. I agree with that. I will not disagree with Tiffany Stratton solely because she is next up on the women's side, but also at this point. You want you want your these guys are a big deal. They're not the number one. They're not first on the list. But after them, it's them. So I see that you. I could definitely put Nia Jax in that group. And I mean, shit, the change of scenery is going to be good for her because again, yeah, like, yeah. she squashed everybody on Raw already. Mm-hmm. Essentially, so so I mean, refresh, <laughs> redo. It's just I feel like there's a lack of mo- like just women wrestling monsters in the roster. It's just what Piper Niven and her really about. If you want to count Valerie Halla, but right. um, but like you gotta make something out of it. So I I, I understood at the get go out the gate that it had to be nuclear heat and it'll work and just giving her a new change of scenery, like Unk said. So. It was it, it. I would. It wouldn't be my pick per se. I would have put her on like the draft that you see on the WWE.com website. Be That's like, oh yeah, draft. She, like, Twitter draft, <laughs> Twitter draft. You know, like <laughs> just welcome like, to the special three minute edition of the draft live on Speed. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> oh no! <laughs> oh, that is terrible. The disrespect to one don't Nia put that Jax. Don't put that in the universe because next year we're gonna have the WWE speed draft. Oh um, yes. You put that into the universe, it's gonna happen. <laughs> the very first pick of the first round of the WWE speed draft is it's an auction. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and uh listen, we don't even gotta set this one up. I could just go ahead and just we could just get through this one. Um I'm gonna try to make this not a thing. And I'll make sure only Brie does this, but since she is not here, I would do it for her. Um, the fourth pick of the uh, WWE draft is Liv Morgan. And uh, fuck Liv Morgan. Yeah, that I, is agree. All. I agree. I agree. I agree. That's all I got to say. I agree. <laughs> I agree. I want to make sure y'all want to make sure we got a good read on that one. I didn't. All right, good. Good. Moving. <laughs> Thank you. Moving on. We have round three, which featured a lot more interesting members of the roster. SmackDown getting the first pick in round three continues their heat with a one. And L A night. Yeah. yeah. 
Yagata. And why not is a freaking megastar. Keep him on the blue brand. It's kind uh, of like, he's kind of like how, like, Undertaker's known for being on SmackDown. Like, Edge was known <laughs> for being on SmackDown. Like, LA Knight will always be a SmackDown guy. Yeah, I completely agree. I, I, LA Knight just has that aura, and with SmackDown, it's it's the place for all the charisma. Yeah, and it, it, it's time. it's the perfect place, and it's just I can't argue with that pick. I will say I hope that they do something with LA Knight again. I don't know. After that AJ feud, it's kind of like where do you go from there? Carmelo the Hayes, maybe. Owner. And after that, put have him finally beat Logan. Not in True. Cleveland. Not in Cleveland. No. This is WWE. Nobody wins at home. Oh no! Don't do this. Don't do this to me. Not in Cleveland. That Why that not? prime. He needs that prime energy. No, Richard, don't I do feel this. Like to me. LA Knight, it's time to give him a championship. He's been without one far enough on this main roster. He's been doing everything he's been asked of in the zone. I think it's time. Put the put the belt on him. Then you're not wrong. I, I won't argue with you. This man has carried a lot of WWE when it needed that extra ump, but not Logan and not in Cleveland. That's all I ask. Save it for Berlin. He can win. He could be the charismatic American that wins the United States title in Berlin. Be the Captain America figure. I'm fine with that, but don't do it to Logan, not in, not in Cleveland. So then we go to the next pick for Raw. We have who essentially is about to just be fed to the Sharks, in Unk's opinion, Ricochet be staying on Monday Night Raw. You got to face Brian Breaker. Good luck. He, uh, he, 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 prepared, he prepared with Ivar, at least. I mean, but he didn't prepare for a, 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 run, a car. <laughs> essentially a car crash coming at the him. No. Yeah. It's it's mm. tough to be like, oh, and get excited for Ricochet because when Ricochet and Will Ospreay were first trying to get signed, they got assigned essentially at the same time, Ricochet to Lucha Underground and uh, Will Ospreay, the GOAT, to NJPW. And you've just seen the difference in their careers since. So I'm like, Ooh, and people at the time were saying Ricochet was going to be the bigger megastar. So I, I don't hate Ricochet. I'm just tired, I guess. I, but that's just my I, opinion. I feel like this is so... I feel like that's... Like all wrestling opinion, subjective. Yes. Because that could be completely placed on how he was booked. Because think about it. Prince Puma wasn't booked no way in Lucha Underground. Mm -hmm. Right? Ricochet wasn't booked no way in WCPW. You feel mm -hmm. me? So again, it's all about what it's all about where that pencil landed next yeah. to your name. So I promise you, if you give Ricochet the same path in New Japan, the same path that Will had, I promise you, he probably would have had a career on par with him. You know what I'm saying? So oh, I don't again, I don't disagree with you. Oh it's thanks. just we had that this is what we've got unfortunately, is now Rick of Shays trying to win the WWE Speed Championship. It went down how, downhill with Ricochet. It went downhill with Ricochet when he wore that night Nightwing gear. He got Dick grayson real hard. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and it was against AJ of all people. Oh. Of course. Because they were, they were just billing him as a fucking real-life superhero. They tried. They never. They Adrian Neville treatment him. Vince had a weird fascination with that, but we will move we'll on, on to the next pick. The people, the cry babies. I'm so sorry, Sefe. The cry babies of the night on SmackDown. The Bloodline, which features Solo Sokoa, 
MFT Tomatongo, which we still haven't figured out what that is, and the hostage Paul Heyman being drafted and staying on SmackDown. I love that one. <laughs> the hostage Paul Heyman. The hostage Paul Heyman. Like I, I'm ex- I mean, I'm just happy Thomas here. I'm so yo, I wish we yo. Can we get a punch in on Paul's fucking face? He looks like he needs help. <laughs> help me! <laughs> help! He's scared. He is genuinely scared of Solo. Listen, man. If I could just get an acting class with, if I could just sit down with Paul Heyman and he could teach me how to cut a promo in three hours. Oh, oh, <laughs> oh. It's over. Because I believe him. I believe it. In the commitment. Oh, remember when he didn't shave? He was stressed out. Roman was gone. He is <laughs> my tribal chief. I don't know what's going on. And then the next <laughs> week when Roman's announced he has just for men. Just and for clean men. Days. Clean shave. He looked 30. <laughs> <laughs> That's why he got the ring, man. That's why he got the ring. That's why he got the ring. And we will end it with the last round of round number three. And we have burgers after burgers after burgers after burgers. Raw's final pick is Sheamus. Yes. Much it's fight night. It's fight night at Netflix. It's fried night at Netflix. Fried night. <laughs> no. <laughs> I... Listen, we not shaming no. Seamus here. No, no we're not bad shaming. I, we love Seamus on this channel here, on this I, platform, this wonderful platform that we own. Seamus, I is told you, I love Chubby Seamus, but it's just he's starting to even accept the fact that he gained a little weight. But it's okay; it's not bad. Now give me back Fat Walter too. That's all I want. No, you just want to just let it all go. No, man. I told you Gunther's healthy. He's good. Gunther was healthy there too, except his chops, you know, probably hit like shotguns. That's all I'm saying. Uh, yes. I'd rather not. I'd rather not. Shout out to Seamus rounding out the third round of the draft so far. We got one more round left, man. We got one more round left. We got one more round left, and this caps off. And this one night. was the most interesting, I have to say. Surprised than- everybody. Other than round one, we have the first pick. SmackDown is staying with the phenomenal AJ Styles. How we immediately, feel? immediately I cried and I'm like, this is turning into the Groundhog Day thing because I don't know if this feud is over. But I mean, I don't know what LA Knight is going to be doing. But I know for sure AJ Styles is damn sure heading to backlash. And he's going to lose to Cody. You heard it here first. He will. Unfortunately, he will. <laughs> all sad. that, all this reminds me of is last night when you didn't even let Nikki finish his story. Chris. What was that? I met that he met AJ Styles. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I hate yeah. you. I hate you. Buckley yeah. Morgan, the moment, you. the moment he said Gainesville, Georgia, I was like. I turn on you. <laughs> <laughs> Nikki was all alone in the ring. Everybody had already turned on him. <laughs> all right. So, Raw will stay with Alpha Academy for their first pick in the fourth round. I feel like that's a given because Gable just recently did the heel turn and it's fucking hot. Yeah, so you do not want to let him slip through your fingertips. So they did the right thing. Mm-hmm. So solid pick. Andrade was a Surprise was a weird me. one. Yeah, Andrade was a cool one. I'm excited. I'm excited so think, that Andrade is going. You think they're gonna break split Zelina up from the LWO and put her back with Andrade? Yeah, I think that would be spot on. Yes. Yep. I'm all for it. As much as I love that the LWO has gotten another chance to be something. And Bree, I will never agree with you at all about Rey Mysterio. I am sad that 
they're just not good as a faction that they don't have any momentum no ray mysterio doesn't need to be in a retirement home but maybe it is time to break it up let everybody go their separate ways and then we could try again in like a year think about it a year ago the lwo was like the hottest thing ever and now literally literally one year later it's like shit (laughs) and you gotta put them on again we have the final pick of the draft the one that shocked everybody (laughs) the one that i think everybody in this call had the most comments about especially unk kiana james from nxt coming up to the main roster and when i say everybody had comments including unk it's because he straight up shamed the pc he was like oh okay they all got ready for one person to go like everybody like you got no like no we're gonna run through this we can run through this okay I won't yes be long. so you gotta think about it let's say you are grinding at the performance center in the gym clanging and banging like a madman every day just trying to get a shot to get on level up trying to do your thing and you get a blast email and it says, hey, show up to the PC tonight. It's draft night. I'm thinking, all right, bet. I got something about the wrestle. I could possibly be drafted. No. We just want you to sit outside the ring and clap if somebody get drafted. <laughs> Not me. <laughs> Listen, that means I work for WWE and I'm under contract. That means I get paid to do that. Now, personally, that's cool. But I could just imagine that that was somebody's night. What you doing? I'm about to go sit down and watch SmackDown for two hours at the place I go work out at. And that was I all I said. That's what I got. That was all I said, y'all. That was it. I, I, I feel like, yeah, I feel like that that's valid is the fact that the worst part is, too, is if nobody else knows but Kiana, that she's the only person that's there. So everybody is genuinely watching to right. see, oh, okay, so, cool, so, is right. my call up. And then she's the only person that knows. So everyone around is just like, oh my God, we didn't know it was you. I know. Down. I was like, I was really banking on Blair Davenport to be called up. That was my personal pick as far as nxt call-ups but Hopefully that i mean on monday man yeah so i mean i haven't really been paying attention to what she's done in nxt so far uh i know her gimmick like being like the executive and stuff like that but i don't know no, I'll, have see, to, I, I'll have to i feel i feel like this possibly could i don't want to call it a rush job because i don't work there and i don't know what internally what they want and what they're looking for so it's obvious that somebody up here on the main roster sees something down there in Kiana James that say we need her on this main roster now. She's done. Let's go. So I can't wait to see what happens. I can't wait to see whether she, you know, sinks or swims. I feel like we're not going to have NXT call-ups of the past where – when they do get called up, we're there crying because we're like, all right, either you're going to be shot to the moon or you are just going to be shot down. like older. Shot down. Yeah. I I don't think we're going to have that anymore, especially with Trips and Sean. Mm-hmm. I think Kiana will thrive. I just don't know how the main roster is going to take to her. Man, listen, you got to think, okay, with the continuity thing coming back into play and everything making fucking sense, do you know how often people go back and forth between main roster and NXT now? I, so I do. You. I just also know that there are fans that only watch main roster shows. Mm, well, hopefully, hopefully this could be something that could open their minds up and get them to watching it. If not, then don't be confused because WWE has a, great way of recapping and making sure that you know what happened yeah there's it's just it's those certain wrestling fans that have never like have never watched njpw but then kenny omega was thriving and so they were like oh yeah i know exactly what the product is without knowing what the product is 
-hmm. it's just they have their their tunnel vision so i'm excited i think that she'll do good but i'm also worried that people are immediately going to be like who's this chick with the gucci bag and the short skirt it's uh, like gear. so if tiffany stratton is the barbie doll of smackdown she's the brat doll she's the brat doll of raw yeah, yeah. so well, if, like, to answer your question who is this girl it's kiana james her name on the screen that should yep. be like we just, it's right here, Kiana James. That's her. <laughs> yep. She'll wrestle next week. <laughs> I think they're also trying to fill it out too, because right now, currently on the Raw women's side, we're looking very slim, depleted. We yep. have we have great talent like Ivy Nile. We have great talent like Shayna Baszler. We have great talent like. Uh, even Chelsea Green, who's just can sell anything her heart uh, desires. You got the party girls, Caden Carter, uh stuff of what name? Katana like, Chance. Katana Chance. And listen, they all can't keep whooping each other's ass every week. I seem like that's all I see. They just it's the same seven, eight women fighting each other every Monday at around 10. Oh hell, dude. <laughs> Let me tell you about the indies, my guy. <laughs> It's the same five people. <laughs> all have been champion and all have been driving to be champion. That's the storyline for the indies. But I like this. I like this draft. I had fun. What did you guys overall? Overall, so far, uh, my anticipation wasn't high because the last couple drafts have been subpar, meh, to say the least. So as far as in this new era, making changes and keeping some things the same. The Andrade pick shook me a little bit. Also, the Nia Jax pick did because it's like, all right, now SmackDown is getting some some new matchups that I ain't see yet. So, overall, good night one. Hopefully, we have a better night two. Same here. Uh, Kiana James was a surprise for me. Andrade was for me, it was at least kind of logical given the story that they're trying to tell with the LWO. Good said, and Carlito turning. Um, <clears throat> as far as Night 2 is concerned, I, I don't know. You think there'll be more tag teams? Yeah, 100 Switched over? I can see Profits moving over. The Profits, uh, pretty deadly. Uh Who's a good tag team on Final NXT? Testament? Final Testament can go to NXT. There's a there's a lot of potential. There's a lot Ooh, of I, listen. What if they're pulling the wool over your eyes and we draft Baron Corbin and we get the Wolf Dogs on Monday Night Raw? No, nah, Baron Corbin can stay on NXT level up. I'm good with that. No, no, man. You talk about disrespect. Punch in right here. The disrespect to the no. legend known as Baron Corbin. I will not sit. I'm sitting down, but I will. St I will not stand for. You want to know what else is a legend? Please tell me the Tooth Fairy, and that's fake too. Jesus Christ! Just like the man, just like his career. The man retired, Kurt Angle. That actually happened. It wasn't a good retirement, and it wasn't a full a That's full the, body the, the, angle. Look, it it happened. <laughs> it happened so, at so MetLife Stadium. Crash, so do car crashes. We don't talk about car crashes. <laughs> Listen, there's certain things I tolerate in this world here. All right, I tolerate this is your life. I may even tolerate a uh, uh, Rikishi stink face video from time to time, but what I will not tolerate. Is Baron Corbin slander? You hear me? I'm I will not go Baron for Corbin it. propaganda as we speak now. I will not stand for it. You hear me? <laughs> He's a See, for a reason. Like I will say that I do like Baron Corbin because he take he like that finisher is probably the most unique finisher I've seen in a while. That end of days is probably the most unique finisher I've ever seen. And then he was balding, and then he got and then he got bald. <laughs> And then he got go called a, and then he got uh called a dumpster fire by Cena. Listen, 
for me, right, and I don't want to turn this into a Baron Corbin tangent here, but if you went back and watched Sad Corbin and you did not get invested, you did not care, you did not enjoy anything about Sad Corbin, then uh, where's your heart at? Because it's obviously Sad Corbin was good. The, the Sad Corbin and Happy in the street. Oh, uh, <laughs> the shirt. He like, sir, I need to see ID. This is my <laughs> face on the side of a production <laughs> truck. I work here. You don't have credentials. Yo, the only part of Corbin that I do enjoy was when he was Sad Corbin and he had the feud with Biggie where he was trying to steal the money in the bank briefcase. Steal the brief. He need he listen. He needed some luck, man. He was down on his luck, and he needed that. And it was just so good. Somehow, yeah. some way, he he hit, and he he became happy, and I became sad. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this has been our. And now that we ha- we did this, we have to do it on Monday. Also, this has been our oh, night yeah. one recap for the WWE Draft twenty twenty four. We may just do a watch along, honestly, because we had a lot more funnier you know shit what? to say during the watch along. Yeah. Well, we you know what? Com- a- com- we, we, gave, we gave our own definition to MFT. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, listen. Can we say it? I feel like yeah. we don't want to say it here. Yeah. We can say Mo- it here? We can say yeah. it? Yeah, motherfucking Tongan. Motherfucking Tama- Tongan. <laughs> Tama Tonga. What else could it be? Who? What is? You please tell me. Comment, please talk to me in the comments below. What is an MFT? I know what an NFT is, but the MFT? What is that? Motherfucking Tongan. The motherfucking (laughs) Tongan. We couldn't figure it out. I was mad. I was legitimately mad. I'm like, what does MFT stand for? Motherfucking Tongan. That's what it has to be. So, and look, my schedule is open. Monday, live. Watch along and reactions. I'm here. I'm for it. I'm 100 down. We just need to do it and just give our commentary over Hell what yeah. we think. Um, you guys can follow Two and a Half Heels, same as what he Unk has written. You guys can follow Downtime in the Ring, same as Chris has written. Downtime in the Ring on YouTube. We hope you guys enjoyed this special episode just because the draft was here. We decided, hey, we're gonna record it. We're gonna give our thoughts, and we will see y'all in the next video.